Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about Rock Bottom by R.K. Lilly. This is the sequel to Bad Things, and Bad Things still holds the spot in one of my favorite books just of ever. It was really, really fun. Disclaimer, this one is not really, really fun. This goes to a much darker place, and so Yes, we still have these characters that we love and hate so much at the same time. Damn, are they flawed. And I think that's why I'm drawn to them. And I think that's a safer word than to say, oh, I love these characters because I hate them so much at the same time as I love them. So yes, safe ground, I think, would be to say that I'm drawn to them because I have a thing for flawed characters. So if you are interested in hearing a little bit about this, I will link my book talk for bad things up here. I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. It is a spin-off series from the Up in the Air series, which is, again, one of my favorite series. I really, really love Rebecca's writing style. Like, oh my god, it's so good. I will go ahead and give you a non-spoiler little review of this first, and then jump into the spoilers, but I'll warn you before I do that. Coming out of the first book, we're left at a funeral, and so they have to overcome this extreme loss. And I really think that the way Tristan chose to grieve with that and really didn't grieve much at all, it was almost his way of just different choices of distraction. I, I don't feel like he really did deal with his problem and I think that was very perfect for his character. Just they have, there was so many struggles as, as individual people and then uh, as a couple and they are toxic for each other but that does not stop us from rooting for them and Oh my god, after you read this book, like, all you want to do is root for these guys because they have just dealt with so damn much. When I was reading this, because I took a very, 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 like, five, six month break between um, finishing this, I had, like, maybe about that much left and I just, <laughs> I took a really long break and I didn't know that Lovely Trigger, which is the third book in the series, I thought it's going to end at this and I knew how it was going to end and I was like, I couldn't bring myself to finish it. I mean, I'm really glad that I did. And oh, am I glad that I did. The ending, I think, is is better. How she chose to end it, that's not really spoiling saying whether it was a good thing or a bad thing because I kind of like bittersweet stuff, but I also like happy stuff, but I also like really not happy stuff. So I'm not really spoiling you there. I don't know. I just, I really loved that last quarter so damn much. But yeah, this book is, it's just heartbreaking. And it's not in one of those oh, you're chasing after your love, and it just that really sappy stuff. It's not this. It's not that at all. Like, this is just guttural. I'm trying very hard not to spoil, so I don't want to accidentally, so I think that is cue time to jump into the spoiler section. I gave a much better summary with the first book and discussion, and I was actually pretty happy with how that one turned out, so go rewatch that one. So come back when you have read this and talk spoilers with me. Okay, so I'll see you later. Bye. I have this in physical and on Kindle, so I'm consulting the Kindle because that's where I wrote my notes. We would hear stuff like, every misstep that led us down that path to our destruction was our own doing, but to this day, I still hated that guitar. Things like that would make me so anxious, and I don't remember if the first book was told in past tense, like how this is, but I just fell in love with the way that this was told. I d oh, I just, I don't even care if it was consistent, whether that one was or not. It was perfect for this story. Oh, I really have to talk for a, a, a good couple seconds about the parallel between her mother and her mother's life and then her and what her life has kind of been become. And she thought, had I given too much, was there enough of me left to even try to move on from this? Is this what had happened to my mother? I wondered, feeling a bit of sympathy for her for the first time in years, had some man broken her spirit so much so she had become a shell of a woman without him? Would I let myself turn into some apathetic ghost of a woman? No, I thought furiously. I was even stronger than her. I would struggle to the end. Just these parallels that were brought up so often that yes, they were so toxic for each other. And I kind of did wonder, I mean, to an extent, yes, this is her background with her mother and then her sister being brought into, oh man, I'm gonna talk about her sister being brought back into this. That loose end was so tied perfectly. But I was curious why so much time was spent on that. Not that I didn't think it was relevant, but I was curious. Oh, and we find out about Tristan and the man that did shit to his mother when he was younger and that's why he's so overprotective with Danica because he's he's making up for, you know, not being able to protect his mother in the past when he was so young. And almost every time they would talk, it'd be just about like this small thing that would, you know, bother her or this mood or this reaction. And then she had this thought once 
or she actually said this once during an argument, I don't understand how this got so twisted. And I'm just like, it happens every single time you guys speak or talk about anything almost ever. When they got married, it was so sudden and out of the blue, but she wanted something to show that, you know, they are together and that, you know, no groupies would come on to, I mean, not that that would really stop them, but, you know, hopefully that it would make her feel better. I guess they both are kind of very possessive of each other, so it, it's why it made sense to me, like, the motivations behind it. I was just like, at first, uh, no, yes, this, yes, this makes sense. But then when they brought up the baby thing, I was like, this is very fast, but again, I then understood the motivations. I was, ex it was explained to me. Ooh, this was about the point at which I stopped and I'm like, why did I stop at this point? Cause this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read ever. There was an anchor tied around both of his ankles and it was taking him deep into black fathomless depths, drowning him slowly but surely. I didn't tell him that he was dragging me down with him. Tristan got really deep into the drugs and he got really deep into the drinking and we think, Okay, this is him hitting rock bottom. It's not even close. And then they got pregnant and it was great. And kind of on a side note here, she was trying to find her sister. And Danica was trying to find her sister and she found her when she had actually met Tristan and his band and the guys and everything. And then she was kind of oh, off put by her when she was talking. And she was kind of off put by Dolly when she was talking about Tristan and stuff. She's like, so how serious are you guys? And she's just like, I didn't appreciate that. She's pissed that Tristan didn't tell her that he had met with Dahlia. Why Tristan didn't tell Danica that Dahlia um, had contacted him and the whole band thing happened and he was just like, because I was worried it would hurt your feelings that she contacted me but didn't contact you still. And I was like, oh. That happens a lot where we're just so enraged with Tristan is like, how could you do that? You're so in the wrong. You had no right to keep that from her. And then he gives this really legitimate reason and you're just like, oh. That, make, that makes sense. And that is what I love so much about this book. It's, I don't know, just misunderstandings in other books are generally like, oh, well, it obviously it was this. With this, it's just, I don't know. It's just so well done. I love it. The arguments are just good. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's get into Dean for a minute here. Dean, we've, we've hated him for a while. We've hated him for a while. And earlier in this, he has tried multiple, multiple times to try to break them up by getting these floozies all around Tristan all the time, inviting them into his room when he's passed out drunk on the bed or just, you know, sleeping. And then arranging for Danica to try to trap him. <sighs> so annoying. But then Danica, she's exhausted and she's you know, going to classes. She didn't tell anyone that she's pregnant and she's going about and doing and doing and doing. She slipped and hit the tub wrong. She continued going about her day and then she got cramps and she tried calling Tristan and he wouldn't answer and she went to his place and um, I think, I, be I believe she fell asleep on his couch or something like that, and he eventually, you know, gets there. I'm pretty sure he's drunk on his ass. I'm pretty sure he's either drunk or high as a kite. And she miscarries. And it would have been a boy. That's what she used to get Lysia kind of out of this, this place where she was blaming Tristan for Jared's death, and it gave her something to live for, basically, to look forward to. And then with that gone, then Lysia kills herself. And there's just, I'm gonna read a couple of these, and they're just really darkly beautiful. For the first time in my life, I began to fantasize about dying. Not ending my own life, necessarily, but about the peace of it, the tranquility. And I just, I remember thinking, are you serious? This poor guy. It, the deck of cards that he has been dealt, it is the equivalent of, you know, getting your name drawn into reaping two years in a row. It is, do not collect $200, do not pass go. I cannot think of any, you know, cheeky little ways to say that. It is just worse than bad luck. It's his brother, it's his mother, it's his wife miscarried. His relationship is basically in shambles. It's drugs, it's drinking, it's addiction, it's just shit. And you know what? When Danica found out about Lasita and that she killed herself, I loved Danica's reaction. Her initial thing was how selfish of her. And I mean, albeit she does, within a paragraph, I believe, say, I still feel for her and I could not even begin to like put myself in her shoes or understand. And her initial thing is how selfish. I felt like it was honest. And she tried to reason with him saying that Jared wouldn't want this for him, this place that he's in in his life, but you know, nothing's getting through to him. But then we get this perspective from Tristan and we're just thinking he's just not hearing, but we see it through his head and we, he is hearing. 
he thinks that I'm, I'm cursed, you know, my, my brother, my mother, these people around me, and I'm just dragging everybody down, and Danica doesn't deserve to be dragged down. Oh, and another really beautiful part, this is why the last chunk of this book, yes, while it's not happy by any means, just all oh, these beautiful little pieces. Pieces of me have been shattered in that bed, important, essential pieces that would not, could not ever find their way back together, but I kept going. Life is cruel like that. And so she sent Tristan divorce papers with a letter that said, either choose rehab or divorce. It's your choice. But we find out that, you know, those divorce papers that she sent, there was no letter. And we know that it was Dean took the letter which said rehab or divorce, you know, take your pick. Of course not. So he just thinks it was all divorce, which is why he is in this place. And then over a month later, she found out that she was pregnant again. And honestly, I didn't see the second one coming, okay? I, well, it was more like I didn't see I didn't see it happen twice. I didn't expect that. Let's just say that. And when she finds that out, she gets this, you know, new blossomed hope that maybe this is what he needs and that'll, you know, get him out of this place that he's in. So she gets stalled up and she goes over to his place and Dean is there with, you know, a bunch of groupies and, oh, she, he's, he's hit rock bottom. I mean, we, we feel like we've seen him at this really dark place and we've never seen him this bad. He's not himself at all. And he begins like undressing her and groping her in front of these people and he's so rough with her and then Dean is even nice to her and we're thinking is it that bad that Dean is being nice to her but still he's being very slick and so no and he gives her orange juice find out that it's roofied and Danica's trying to tell Tristan that she's pregnant but he doesn't want to hear it and then Tristan's like no get out and then Dean takes her home and she's feeling really really dizzy and out of out of it basically she's roofied now and so he's driving her and sticking his hand up her skirt and then he begins saying in great really disgusting detail what he's going to do to her and how he's going to drive her out in the desert and he's going to rape her and they get hit by a car and Tristan doesn't know for five days then he gets a call because Dean died in that car wreck he gets a call from Dean's mother and that there was another woman in the car with him and he calls Jerry Jerry says that Danica didn't want to talk to him Anyway, he finally goes to the hospital and he finds out everything. And we discover that Danica not only lost the baby, but can no longer have children and is now going to walk with a significant limp. She can no longer dance. And seven days after he saw Danica in the hospital, he checked himself into rehab. And Danica, oh, I just, I love, I love that she is not a wallower. I don't like wallowers. The gist of it was, I was now a cripple and I could never have children. My response to that reality, I will not let this define me. So help me God, I won't even let this slow me down. I wasn't a dancer anymore, and I would never get to grow a child inside me. Those were facts. I refused to cry about it, or if I did, to even so much as acknowledge those fucking useless tears, I would find something else to define me. I just had to figure out what. Okay, this part, I was draw I was tearless throughout all of this, through the miscarriages, through the accident, through, I was fine, okay? This got me crying. This is just another reason that I love Bev. So Bev is sitting with Danica and she took time off just to be with her and she's so sweet. You were never a burden, Danica. And this isn't kindness. If it's not kindness, then what is it? My dear, this is what's called family. And that just made me cry because I, I so remember what her family was like. And, oh no, it just, it broke my heart. And we find out that, um, Dean had actually raped Dahlia and the baby that was born was Dean's. And then we find out that, you know, six months later, part of Tristan's rehab program was to speak with Danica. And oh, there was just this really beautiful line. And she was explaining how the entire conversation was uh, just torture. But every coffin needed its last nail. And that meeting was ours. And it was such a good ending. I, I like the bittersweet stuff. Not the bitter is really the right word, but just the not happiness. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I want to know your favorite parts from this or your favorite quotes because this thing is so full of the really good things, especially right at the end. So I'll see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye. Tristan and... Fuck you, man. See, really?